students welcome to my fifth lecture of power system so in last lecture we are discussing about the components of thermal power plant already we have discussed about the two components uh, named as coal handling plant and ash handling so we will start today from the another component named as boiler so what is boiler boiler is a closed vessel in which water is converted into steam by utilizing the heat of coal combustion here you can see the boiler is here uh, one another section is here which is known as furnace actually the boiler is put in the furnace in the furnace actually the combustion of coal occurs so in the boiler the water came from the river and passes through the economizer and then feed it to the boiler so uh, when the boiler gets heated by the combustion of coal the water in it converted into the steam so here uh, you can see the heat of combustion of coal in the boiler utilized to convert water into steam at high temperature and pressure the flue gases from the boiler furnace make their journey through superheater economizer air breather and finally adjusted to atmosphere through the chimney so there are two types of boilers uh, the first one is fire tube boiler in fire tube boilers hot gases are passed through the tubes and water surround these tubes you can see here the furnace is here the hot gases enters in these tubes and this section is the hot gas outlet the water actually surround these tubes and get heated uh, through the pipes uh, where the hot gases are passed so here uh, we can't get the high pressure of steam the maximum pressure is about 7.5 kg per square centimeter the capacity of steam generation is about 9000 kg to 15000 kg which is approx 9 ton to 15 ton of steam per hour so where we can use here uh, where low pressure low temperature and low capacity of steam is so another type of boiler which is water tube boiler it is the boiler which is actually used in thermal power plant in this boiler water is inside the tubes and hot gases are outside the tubes just opposite of functioning of fire tube boiler so here you can see furnace is there water is placed in these tubes the hot gases passes outside the tube the heat uh, the uh, hot gas heat is connected with these tubes and the in water inside these tubes get evaporated the steam is produced which is came through this section capacity is about 10 lakh kg which is 1000 ton per hour of steam uh, example where high pressure high temperature high capacity steam is required that is thermal power station so come to the next section next component superheater so what is superheater actually uh, the steam produced in the boiler is wet and is passed through a superheat heater where it is dried and superheated so uh, a superheater consists of a group of tubes made of special alloy steel such as chromium molybdenum these tubes are heated by the heat of flue gases during their journey from the boiler furnace to chimney so here you can see the picture uh, the flue gases is passing through the superheater section and the outlet of flue gases here actually the steam which came from the boiler furnace from this side and it comes again the path of flue gas so you can see here it is a tube like structure and the steam which is passing through these pipes are again heated by these flue gases and this wet steam is then converted to 
dry steam and this dry steam or superheated steam uh, is then passed through the turbine so what is the function of uh, superheater or what are the benefits the first benefit is the overall efficiency is increased of the thermal pump second too much condensation in the last stage of turbine which would cause great corrosion is avoided. so if we uh, pass the wet stream to the turbine then what will happen there may be possibility of corrosion so to avoid the corrosion uh, we have to convert the wet steam into dry steam so come to the next component economizer so what is economizer economizer is essentially a feed water heater and derives heat from the flue gases from this purpose the feed water is fed to economizer before supplying to the so here you can see the boiler is here the water is coming from the river and then it actually comes to the economizer section so in economizer the flue gas is passing through the economizer so water inside the economizer is preheated before keeping to the water you can see in the above picture also here the economizer section is here so the flue gases and passes through the superheater and then it comes to the economizer section it is actually a uh, pipe section where the water is preheated so the economizer extracts a part of heat of flue gases to increase the feed water temperature this results in increasing boiler efficiency so you can say uh, we can also save fuel which is cold so come to the next slide another, another component is here air preheat so what is air preheater air preheater increases the temperature of air supplied for coal burning by deriving heat from flue gases so uh, you know that for any type of combustion we require air or oxygen so in the furnace uh, we also require oxygen for the burning of coal so the air is drawn from the atmosphere by a forced drought fan uh, you know that in atmosphere there may be a chance of uh, containing moisture in the air from from the atmosphere so it is passed through air preheater before supplying to the boiler the air preheater extract heat from flue gases and increases the temperature of air used for coal combustion so what are the benefits it increases actually thermal efficiency and increase steam capacity per square meter of the boiler surface so here you can see the fresh air is coming in this the air preheater the flue gases are coming to uh, the side fresh air actually the flue gases passes through the tubes this is the outlet of flue gases the fresh air came from this side and when it actually connects with these tubes it becomes hot and this hot air then is then sent to the furnace for the combustion of coal so come to the next component condenser so what is condenser a condenser is a device which condenses the steam at the exhaust of turbines so when this super steam is passed through the turbine the turbine starts to rotate so what happens to the steam then the steam uh, which is exhausted is then condensed so, so here you can see the uh, picture of condenser so the steam coming from the turbine came through these sections these are some tube structures 
so uh, when this uh, cooling water is coming to these pipes it actually condenses the steam which is coming out from the turbine so it is then con condensed and collect into the hot then this side uh, the water which is coming from this side becomes hot and came to this uh, cooling water outlet section so what is the function of condenser firstly it creates a very low pressure at exhaust of the steam turbine thus permitting expansion of steam in the prime mover to a very low pressure this helps in converting heat energy of steam into mechanical energy in the prime secondly the condensed steam can be used as feed water again to the boiler so next component is cooling arrangement or you can say cooling tower so in order to improve the efficiency of the steam exhausted from the turbine is condensed by the mean of condenser so already we have seen in the next previous slide so what is drawn from a natural source of supply such as river canal or lake and circulated through the condenser so you can see this water is coming from natural resources of water like lake and passes through these tubes when it uh, connected with this steam it becomes hot so the circulating water takes up heat of the exhausted steam and it becomes hot this hot water from the condenser is passed on to the cooling towers where it is cooled again and the cold water from the cooling tower is reused in condenser so there is a circ uh, closed loop is here the water came from river passes through this tube becomes hot and again sent to the cooling tower and again it is reused to condense the steam in the condenser so our next component is prime mover steam turbine prime mover actually the dry and superheated steam from the superheater is fed to the steam turbine through main valves the heat energy of steam when passing over the blades of turbine is converted into mechanical energy so here you can see the water is here which is converted into steam for section is here pulverized coal which is burned here which converts the water into steam and this steam is then passed to the turbine section this is turbine which consists blades and when this heat energy of uh, steam is passing over the blades uh, the turbine is converted into mechanical energy blades of turbine is converted into mechanical energy. so this mechanical energy in then sent to this generator actually the turbine and generator is coupled and uh, what we need the generator need the mechanical energy to convert the uh, mechanical energy into electrical energy so the steam turbines are generally classified into two types uh, to the action of steam on moving wheels so what are the two types impulse turbine and reaction turbine so what is the uh, impulse turbine in this turbine there are alternate rows of moving and fixed blades the moving blades are mounted on the shaft and fixed blades are fixed on the casing of turbines a set of fixed nozzle is provided and steam is passed through this nozzle the potential energy in the steam uh, due to pressure and internal energy is converted to kinetic energy the steam comes out of the nozzle with very high velocity and impinges on the rotor blades so another type of turbine is reaction turbine so it actually 
uh, does not have fixed no uh, nozzle it has uh, rotating nozzles uh, it also have two alternate rows of moving and fixed blades the moving blades are mounted on the shaft while the fixed blades are fixed in the casing of turbines when high pressure steam passes through these fixed blades then steam pressure drops down and velocity of steam increases so as steam passes over the moving blades the steam expands and imparts energy resulting in reduction in pressure and velocity of steam so here you can see uh, this is impulse turbine nozzle is here two alternate sections of blades this is fixed blade this is rotating blade the steam came through the fixed blade and then passes through the moving blades you can see here the steam pressure is decreasing here but the velocity is increasing here in the reaction turbine this is fixed blade this is a rotating blade so here we are rotating can see here fixed nozzle is here here uh, we have rotating nozzle so here also the steam pressure is very low and also steam velocity is low than impulse turbines so which turbine we use in thermal power plant actually uh, we use compound turbines uh, which is actually the combination of impulse and reaction so coming to the next section water treatment plant. the boiler of thermal power plant required clean and soft water for water life and better efficiency however the source of boiler feed water is generally a river or lake water uh, which may contain suspended and dissolved impurities gases etc so it is very important that water is purified and softened by chemical treatment and then delivered to the next section is drought system used in thermal power plant there are two drought system is there induced drought fan and forced drought fan so induced drought fan is actually a exhaust fan uh, function is to remove rapidly flue gases or you can say smoke from the furnace chamber produced during the combustion it actually sucks the gases from the furnace section and sent to the chimney next is a forced drought fan it is actually a fan it actually uh, uh, the function of uh, this forced drought fan is to provide forced air or oxygen for the combustion purpose furnace it actually uh, sucks the air from the surrounding or atmosphere and then send to the furnace for the combustion of coal so another uh, component is function function of chimney uh, flue gases are produced during combustion process this flue gases produces air pollution so to reduce air pollution it should be passed in the air as high as possible and which is derived from the help of chimney so chimney is a uh, place where the flue gases is passed to the higher section of this earth surface the next component is electrostatic precipitator so uh, the flue gases actually contains ash particles so to decrease the air pollution uh, we have to filter the uh, ash particles from the flue gases so for that purpose we use electrostatic precipitator so what is electrostatic pre precipitator an electrostatic precipitator or electrostatic air cleaner is a particulate collection device that removes particles from a flowing gas using the force of an induced electrostatic charge so the basic idea of an ESP is charging, collecting and removing in the next slide we will see the 
functioning of electrostatic precipitator. So what happens in the electrostatic precipitator? Every particle either has or can be given a charge positive or negative. So what we do? We impart a negative charge to all the particles in the gas stream using this blue electrodes the flow gas is coming uh, through these electrodes and the negative charge is imparted you can see negative charge is imparted here then a grounded plate having a positive charge is set up so you can see here three plates are there uh, red color plates so it is uh, given by positive supply so the negatively charged particles would migrate to the ground grounded collection plate and be captured so you uh, you know the property of charge opposite charges attract each other so here the particles uh, which becomes negatively charged is passes through these positive positively charged plates and what happens uh, this positively charged plate attract the uh, this negative charged flue gas particles so the particles would quickly collect on the plate and creating a dust layer the dust layer would accumulate until we remove it so that's how uh, we clean the flue gases which has to be sent to the atmosphere so thank you guys uh, in the next class we'll see another components of thermal power